All right, fuck it. Let's talk Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder's wet dream. And please, oh God, do not come after me, Zack Snyder fans. I swear I say it with the utmost sincerity and interest. Also, how do we not have a name for you guys yet? How do we have the Swifties or the Beehive or the One Directioners or the Beavers, Believers, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, but you get what I'm saying. I'm not trying to call you guys cultists, though. That kind of seems like an immediate bannable offense to the Shadow Realm with you guys. It's like taboo or something. Anyway, Rebel Moon. I'm sure I probably saw a promotion for this movie on Twitter a while back, but you know how Twitter goes. In and out the brain. So when this trailer dropped about a week, maybe even two weeks ago at this point, I had no idea what this movie was even about. But from the discourse online, you wouldn't be hard pressed into thinking that this, this right here, is just Star Wars. But Zack Snyder, rather you like him or not, the trailer itself, even without the four or five times reminding me that it was made by Zack Snyder, had Zack Snyder written all over it. It's actually pretty crazy that his style is so recognizable at this point. But here, let's just get into it. So I'm not going to really be talking about, or I guess I should say, breaking down the trailer. There's many, many YouTube channels that do and have already done that. In reality, as someone who has no real ball in the game when it comes to Zack Snyder as a director, I like some of his work, love some of his work, and absolutely despise some of his work. Fuck you, Martha. But as someone who has no real extreme opinions on the guy, I'm also not ignorant enough to say that he's not one of the most recognizable, divisive, and, at the end of the day, talented directors of our generation. His style is uniquely Zack Snyder, much in the same fashion as Michael Bay, and I can respect that. And while I don't know if Rebel Moon is going to be good, or if it's just fan fiction Star Wars and just a F you to Disney, or if it's a dream project or even a project that Zack Snyder could give two shits about. I do have a couple thoughts on the trailer and the vision itself. Thoughts on what can make a wet dream of such astronomical proportions such as Rebel Moon a success, and what could also possibly be its downfall. So with that, let's talk the pros. At the end of the day, it is Zack Snyder. His fans will watch regardless. That is a given. But let's take away the super fans for a moment. The trailer itself is interesting. There's really no other way to go about it. Zack Snyder is no joke when it comes to the cinematography side of things. Even in movies like Batman v Superman, Man of Steel, and Army of the Dead. All movies that I didn't really care for, but are all generally still fantastic to look at. With all of those films having key moments or scenes to showcase the talent and vision behind the camera. Like say the Batfleck warehouse scene for example. But still fuck you Martha. And while I hate talking up a movie while contrasting and comparing it to another studio or movie without any context or nuance. That is not the case here. Fuck you Kathleen you fucking sloppy omelette. The visual details, character designs, and choices at least from the trailer, as well as the world building on display here, is pretty uncanny when you think about it from Star Wars. It's hard not to put those type of pieces together when both protagonists come from desert-built planets. I mean, Scargiver? Skywalker? Come on, you can't tell me this isn't just bootleg Ahsoka. Come on, mate. Come on. But in that same breath, the IP of Star Wars has been pretty much driven completely into the ground, with only the Ahsoka show airing right now straddling that little donut to stay afloat. Which obviously works out in the favor of Zack Snyder and Rebel Moon as a whole, but it really wouldn't work if it was just simply a soulless copycat. But it's not. Or at least, it doesn't feel that way. Just from the trailer itself, the world looks rich and diverse. No, not that kind. A model that Disney Star Wars has strayed far, far away from, and something that actually has been grinding my gears to a point that I am definitely going to have to make a video on it. Subscribe for that. It's crazy that Rebel Moon actually looks like a world from long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. And as someone who hates how many 
fleshy, milk-guzzling humans are in Star Wars now, that pretty much nullifies the whole aspect of the franchise. I can at least see Zack Snyder's vision. And it's a vision that I can appreciate way more than this sloppy shit. Ray Skywalker. Aw, <laughs> oh, fuck off, Ray. Go check out my last video after this one. It kind of highlights all of the points that I'm making now, but in greater detail. But at the end of the day, where there are pros, we must also discuss the cons. So, this is on Netflix. And while some Netflix movies have found themselves some success, none of them are really memorable or even enjoyable after that first initial watch. Movies like the Extraction franchise and, say, The King. Remember that? Such a randomly good movie. I highly recommend and honestly will eventually go back to rewatch that and make a video on it. I mean, look at this cast. It's stacked. But yet, 95% of you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. And that's the point. While yes, I believe Zack Snyder's name alone will be able to propel the movie more than your average Joe, the track record of Netflix originals that are hits are pretty much slim compared to not. And in my eyes, it just seems like an unfortunate waste that we couldn't get a studio behind this project, but yet got an Indiana Jones in the dial of dipshit in The Flash. Crap. Crap. Mega crap. No funny nickname for that. It was just shit. Maybe The Virgin Flash? Nah, it just doesn't have the same ring to it. The online marketing of the movie also just being a more grounded, bootleg Star Wars fanfic doesn't really not help. While it might not seem like it, there are still very loyal Disney Star Wars fans out there. And even if that wasn't the intention from Zack Snyder himself, he definitely didn't help with some of the more, uh, on-the-nose inspirations. Listen, I don't know if Rebel Moon is going to be good or not, and I'm not one of those YouTubers who's going to try to tell you otherwise, but I can tell you I'm intrigued. And I can tell you that I'm more than likely going to check it out. Even in those cons that I was describing, Zack Snyder is just one of those divisive directors. You can either want to be a part of the vision or not. No matter what some of his past film work might entail for you personally, good or bad, he's making his movies his way. And well, fuck it. I guess I'll see you in December, Zack. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, with Dune Part 2 also leaving the box office in November, and with only Fishman 2 on deck for a December release date, that definitely helps out Rebel Moon. With less quality content, as well as the incentive to stay at home for those winter months, it could bode well for Rebel Moon. Or not. I know Netflix hopes so since they're already making a part two. Prayers up, I guess. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.